He's like the the what the five year old who who you know just really wants to go to the party and is having a, a, a real um, a real problem with you know an, an abusive parental situation. <laughs> Clearly, he's someone who has had a very, you know, limited experience of life, and um, definitely has uh, uh, had a, a kind of major uh, amount of abuse because of the way he looks, and uh, uh, is, you know, a kind of indomitable spirit that that uh, refuses to be put down, and will find the way to to. Um, fly in some way. It's amazing, the first time I saw a little bit of, um, of the, the kind of identifying song from early in the story, and they showed me a little, you know, a little pencil drawing uh, of this guy sort of, you know, limping towards the camera, and then at one, on one phrase, like he looked up and there was some look in his eyes and the fact that they can put a look in a in in a drawing's eyes uh, you know is a is a is a thrilling thing and and so actually they're doing they're doing the acting It's been a, an interesting learning experience because it's like no other type of acting that I've experienced. I've done voiceovers, I've done stage, I've done television and film, and it's very unique because you have to create the whole world with nothing except the basic drawings outlining the scene as they intend it to be, and then you have to go back and refine it. They video every um, recording, and that way they are able to, to get some of my mannerisms, my inflections, my posture. And even though I don't think she looks like me, there will be, I think, an essence of me, even from the little bit that I've had a chance to see. And the more I see and the more I've done, the more I think I've, I start to meld with the character. It's through their friendship um, that I think they are able to kind of unite and stand up and fight against these greater powers and, and teach not only through their love for each other, but th through all around that acceptance of all is truly the key for unity and happiness. It was one of the greatest kicks of my life with this Alan Menken, Stephen Schwartz uh, score, which I think is epic. Um, I think Alan Menken and Stephen have, have um, outdone themselves. You are representative of a long line of, of magic and fantasy and all the things that Disney means to so many people. He's a great soldier, and he understands the importance of, of, of an order and carrying out orders, but he also draws the line. And then, of course, he falls in love with Esmeralda, which is um, sort of momentous for him. He's never, he's never encountered anyone quite so beautiful and quite so... Um, combative. I mean, she's almost as equal when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, so he's, uh, he's sort of met his match. I was fascinated by the whole process. It was so, uh, so different than what I'd expected. I thought the actors came in, they saw the finished animation, and they just gave it voices. But um, 
when I found out that it was just the contrary, that the, the voices often kind of animated the animation. Uh, it was uh, it was intriguing. It's fun to work from the inside out, from the outside in, from from an image, and then giving it a voice, and then the voice sort of changing the image um, until the two kind of fuse. In a way, it's kind of like finding a character with dozens of other people. I think uh, what the film has to say is the thing that's going to make it uh, irresistible and why it's kind of an enduring story <clears throat> and why it's a contemporary story. It has to do on a number of levels with the way people are perceived and why they're perceived that way. And that sense of how we are all perceived and what makes someone good and what makes someone evil and whether it's on the inside or on the outside I think is the central theme of the of the story. Of the three of them he's probably the most uh, gregarious and boisterous. The weirdest thing in the world is when they show it back to you and you go, that's me. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's bizarre. It's truly, you know, an actress transformation. You know, you do, you do one of these animated pictures and you're immortal. Kids just will watch them from now to the end of time. I could tell with the gestures and everything that they were, they, they picked up some of me there. And, um, even though I, it's my gargoyle side, you understand. But uh, it's, it's really, it's kind of strange, a kind of out of body experience to see yourself changed into this big stone thing with a huge jaw and wings, you know? <laughs> but you can hear that there's you in there somewhere. It's, uh, it's terrific. Here you have Hugo, who's this guy, this street guy, you know, and you have Victor, who's somebody's, you know, the, the Earl of somebody's son who's now a librarian, some weird thing. And then you have this terrific old kind of street lady, you know. Uh, and the styles don't clash at all. As soon as you put pictures to them, and these wonderful kind of once upon a time situations, it all works. And she's kind of very down to earth. She's kind of an old so and so. She's fun. I love her. <laughs> and she likes to play cards. She has to, tries to keep the men in order if she can, have them toe the mark, you know. She kind of mothers him. That's what she does, you know. But we're all trying to bolster him so he'll feel important. 